At the end of Parshas Pinchas, we read about all the Yom Tovim, Pesach, Shavuos, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, one after another after another. But if you look carefully in the Sefer Torah, we'll notice that there's different types of spaces between the Yom Tovim. So between Pesach and Shavuos, it's what we call a Parsha Sesuma, or indicated in a Chumash by a Samach, which means there is space between Pesach and Shavuos. However, it continues on the same line. It has to have a minimum number of four empty letters of space, but it continues on the same line. Between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur as well, Parsha Susuma, where there's a space, but Yom Kippur continues on the same line. Same goes for the, between Yom Kippur and Sukkot. However, between Shavuos and Rosh Hashanah, it's what we know as Parsha Psucha, a pay, an open Parsha, where the Yom Tif of Shavuos ends and Rosh Hashanah does not begin until the next line. It's called Psucha. It's open. There's a space. There's a gap. What is that space for? Are we waiting to fill something in at that interval? Says the Rishonar, indeed, we are awaiting to fill in the gap. And that is because there is a Yom Tif that is awaiting its insertion in this space between Shavuos and Rosh Hashanah, namely the future Yom Tif of Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av we know in Megillah Se'echa is called a Moyed, Kara Alai Moyed, Lishbar Bachurai. An appointed time, but literally a festival. Tisha B'Av now is the most mournful day of the year, but we await the great day that the Tzoyim HaChamishi will be transformed into a Yom Tif for Klal Yisrael. Therefore there's a Hey, an open space in the Sefer Torah, awaiting the Yom Tif of Tisha B'av. So even today, we don't say Tachnon on Tisha B'av because we feel the latent Yom Tif element of Tisha B'av. Even today, we will not say Tachnon Erev Tisha B'av. Even nowadays, we already feel the Yom Tif quality of Tisha B'av. Now, how will we read Megillah Secha when Mashiach comes? It's such a mournful, sorrowful Megillah. How will we read it in the times of the redemption? So I came across a wondrous commentary of the Ben Eshchai on Megillah's Eicha, where he presents that Eicha could be read as a cheerful, positive Megillah. Few examples on the first Pasuk. Eicha Yashva Vadad. How she sits alone. Literally, it seems very... Painful that Yushalayim sits alone without her children. But the Ben Eshchai interprets that this is a great prophecy and a great compliment to the city of Yushalayim. Because every city in the world is somewhat dependent on import for its success. No city in the world has all the resources that it needs in the city. But the day will come that Yushalayim will be so bountiful, it will be so resourceful and so successful that it will be badad, self-sufficient. It will have everything it needs in its own city. So it will be badad, completely independent. And you'll say, well, maybe it's because so few people will be living in Yushalayim. No, Rabasiyam, it will have so many people living in the city. How many people? Hoysa ke'almana. Literally ke'almana, like a widow. Says the Ben Eshchai, the word ke'almana could be read Alamana cannot be counted. And we go to the sixth Pasuk. All of the glory left Siyan. Literally, all of the greatness and all the grandeur has left the city. However, the Ben Eshchai interprets that this is a great positive prophecy. The way Torah is supposed to be is All Torah is supposed to emanate from Siyan. But nowadays, unfortunately, we're in the diaspora and there are yeshivas all over the world. So the Torah is emanating from all four corners of the world. But the day will come again. All the glory of the Torah will emanate once again only from Tzion. So we await the great day where Tisha B'av is restored to a Yom Tif, And the gap between Shavuos and Rosh Hashanah is filled and we will read Megillah Seicha as a Megillah of happiness and positivity and simcha. May that day come speedily. Bimherav Yamenu. Amen.